Thank you very much for this kind introduction and for inviting me to this exciting meeting. Yes, I will talk about psilocybin for treatment-resistant depression. Here are my disclosures. Most importantly, I can tell you that I uh, have been the principal investigator of the COMPASS 001 trial, which I will share the preliminary results of today. I will also mention to you that I did receive no personal fee for, for this job, like I did uh, have no honorarium for this presentation. I, will, uh, I have been working with uh, the management of affective disorders for a lifetime. And uh, my, uh, my way into this was through the unmet needs in the treatment of depression. So I will start, uh, I will start there, moving on to a brief review of the data on psilocybin for depression and focusing in the end of the preliminary results of this uh, COMPASS 001, sponsored by COMPASS Pathways. Uh, and uh, recently, uh, the company shared uh, publicly the, these preliminary results through press release. The final uh, publication is, is on the way, so you need to wait a bit for that. As Dr. Kwam already has introduced, uh, major depression is a huge burden in many ways, so I don't need to repeat that. He also clearly uh, told you that we have a lot of treatment options, pharmacological, psychological, physical, you name it. However, he also told that many treatment trials or treatment, uh, treatments are not successful. This is actually illustrated with this landmark study from 2006. Many of you know it. It's the STAR-D study by Roche and company. In this study, 3,671 US patients were enrolled and were openly treated with citalopram and SSRI. And uh, as you can see on this slide here, around 36% remitted in this first step treatment. Those patients who did not remit, they were then offered second step treatment. Of those patients, 30% remitted. Those patients not remitted were moved on to third step treatment. And here, only 13% remitted. After this, again, a fourth step, and again, only 13% of the non-remitters from step four remitted. In total, you can sum up and say that around one-third patients, one-third of the patients did not remit even after four steps. Another thing to point out here is that you can see between step two and step three, not much happened. Only 10% remit after, 13% remit after step two. That is the reason why a definition of TRD, treatment-resistant depression, is often uh, uh, referred to as you need to have at least two failed trials. This is also the definition that the COMPASS pathways used in this trial I will present uh, later. So, uh, to sum up, uh, we have definitely unmet needs and uh, psychedelics uh, seem to be one novel strategy for different reasons. One, of course, is that these drugs changes the brain in a different way than our uh, other current options for, for depression. Second, uh, the psychedelic experience in itself may change the patient perspective in a kind of antidepressant way which seemingly acts or works beyond the experience. And that may lead to the fact that, or we need to, to wait and see if that is really what is going to happen, that we have a fast onset of action and also that we can move on with the patient without requiring ongoing medical treatment. But why, why psilocybin? Why, why is psilocybin chosen, uh, at least in, in, in many trials? Psilocybin has, besides being a psychedelic, of course, 
uh, it has a relatively short duration of action for around six to eight hours. Also, uh, the uh, interaction with the, with the brain uh, in terms of the uh, 5-HT2A uh, uh, agonism is a relatively uh, simple mechanism which in, in contrast to, for instance, LSD and ayahuasca and others, is, is more simple. This drug does not affect the dopamine system and other signal systems. So, so it makes it a little more predictable what will happen when you, when you use psilocybin. There are two studies uh, on uh, non-TRD depression with psilocybin. Two small studies, but both controlled. The first study uh, uh, is the study uh, on this slide here, where uh, psilocybin uh, in two doses, 20 milligram and 30 milligram, was uh, in combination with psychotherapy, was compared to a waiting list. And in this uh, study, uh, there was uh, a clear uh, signal favoring psilocybin active treatments. Uh, and uh, also in a follow-up, uh, one year after, 58% uh, of patients were still uh, in, in remission. In the second um, study, a little larger study, but also recently published, uh, uh, patients were in one group treated with psilocybin 25 milligram uh, and uh, plus placebo. And in the other group, uh, uh, patients were treated with one milligram psilocybin plus uh, s citalopram and S-SRI. And uh, this study was a double-blind uh, study. And um, unfortunately, uh, it was negative on the primary efficacy uh, measure. But it was positive on various secondary uh, measures. So overall, it, 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 you could call it a pretty positive study, even if it was essentially negative. <laughs> uh, and uh, then moving on to, um, to TRD. Um, the first study um, which we heard about uh, in terms of TRD was this very, very often uh, cited study by Kahat Harris from the group with David Knott from Imperial College in London. Uh, this study was essentially a feasibility study. Here, as in the other two studies, uh, psilocybin was combined with psychotherapy. And uh, patients were given 10 milligram of psilocybin, uh, and one week later they were given 25 milligram. But it is an uncontrolled study, meaning there are no control group. And uh, patients, and a very small number, only 12 patients, but it was rigorously conducted with a lot of rating scales, a lot of uh, rigorously, rigorousness. And, um, and in this study, uh, there was a positive um, effect on the, on the Matlas scale, which was the primary efficacy, uh, one of the one of the efficacy measures, uh, uh, after one day and after week week uh, week one and after uh, week uh, uh, three and even after three months. So uh, so again a promising uh, um, result. And uh, furthermore, maybe more important, there were no uh, uh, serious adverse events, which that was the same actually in the same in the other studies I just. Uh, reported about. And um, interestingly, uh, in this study, the antidepressant response correlated to the magnitude of the psychedelic experience. So again, some interesting uh, findings. This was, was the basis of the COMPASS pathway study, which I will uh, go a little more into now. Uh, COMPASS 001 uh, uh, was the name of the study. And um, here, um, uh, in this study, uh, we are dealing with a phase 2b study, which essentially is a dose-finding study. Uh, three doses of psilocybin, uh, 25 milligram, 10 milligram, and 1 milligram, uh, were compared double-blindly, single dose. Uh, I say psilocybin here, but, uh, but in the compass, Terminology. This is the compound is called Compass 360, uh, which is their own uh, synthesized uh, formulation of psilocybin. 
in this study, uh, patients uh, were um, were um, uh, uh, recruited in in from many many uh, centers, 22 centers in total, and uh, and uh, our center in Aalborg was one of them. We recruited eight uh, patients uh, over the three years the study uh, lasted. It has been completed here end of 21. It doesn't seem like a lot, but eight patients uh, is a lot when you're dealing with, with these uh, medically uh, industry-sponsored study because there are so many uh, selection criteria that needs to be fulfilled. It's very, very complicated. Uh, in brief, uh, the, the selection criteria was, of course, age uh, and uh, major depressive, uh, depressive disorder, and patients should have at least two uh, failed uh, trials within the current episode. Two, three, or four, but not five or six, but two, three, or four. Uh, patients um, need to be, uh, to be, um, uh, to have a certain severity on the Hamilton uh, depression scale, scoring at least 18, and, uh, and carefully all patients with prior uh, psychotic, bipolar, personality disorder or suicidality was excluded. And besides this, there were a lot of other safety measures. If just the blood pressure was five millimeter uh, over the average, uh, over the normal, it, patients could not be entered. So very many restrictions. Um, the outline is uh, as follows. Uh, patients were screened. Uh, and from screening to, to baseline, baseline is the point right before the, the, the therapy session. Uh, and uh, here, uh, uh, patients were discontinued on other psychotropics. Then uh, they were also uh, prepared for the psilocybin session with two uh, uh, talks with a trained uh, therapist. Then uh, we had the, the therapy, uh, the psilocybin therapy session. And then uh, after we had 12 weeks post-baseline visits where they were weekly assessed uh, with a, a, a remote uh, razor. Uh, and um, and uh, two, 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 uh, at two occasions, uh, right after the psilocybin session, patients uh, again uh, were, uh, were approached by the therapist and some so-called integration therapy uh, was, uh, was, was made. Yes. Um, here um, is uh, a brief outline of the therapy uh, the serocybin session, which uh, lasted around six hours. Patients were not admitted. They were outpatients. They came in the morning and uh, left in the evening. Uh, we make, made sure that they uh, had someone to, to follow them home, uh, relatives uh, or, or others. We did not do it uh, from the hospital. And, um, and, uh, and all the time there was a therapist uh, and an assistant uh, present, so patients were not alone at one single uh, moment. Uh, the environment was a standardized uh, uh, room in terms of furniture, in terms of music playlists, even the book lying on the table was the same as in all the other uh, uh, 22 centers, so very, very standardized. And you see here to, to the right uh, a, a, a glimpse of the non-clinical room. We, we, we tried to make it non-clinical, so I'm not sure it worked, but the patients were okay with that. <laughs> it was actually furniture from Ikea. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if that is confidential. I didn't check with, with the company. Um, yeah, uh, so this is the, 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 the session. And, and here um, I will present uh, for you the results, uh, the preliminary results of the study. We, we, uh, we achieved the goal of these 220 uh, patients. In fact, uh, 79 patients uh, were uh, given uh, uh, 25 milligram, uh, 75 patients, uh, 10 milligram, and uh, 79 patients, 1 milligram. Uh, so uh, you could say, in, in this way, a successful um, recruitment. This is the, the major uh, results of the study. 
the, 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 the primary, primary uh, measure, as I told you, was the mattress, and the primary outcome was defined as change from baseline, that is right before the therapy session, uh, until three weeks after on this scale. Uh, uh, that is the primary outcome. Here we see that there was uh, numerically uh, difference between the arms all the way through. Uh, the result was significant uh, after one day uh, and, it, uh, and also after three weeks, which is the primary uh, endpoint in terms of the, the predefined uh, um, protocol uh, point. And um, so essentially uh, a, a positive, a positive uh, study. Uh, and uh, here is one of the secondary uh, measures, which is sustained response uh, after 12 weeks. Uh, response, as you, many of you uh, know, that is the 50% reduction on the mattress scale he here, the mattress scale. And, um, and uh, so after 12 weeks, uh, around 20% had a sustained response in the, in the 25 milligram and, uh, and in the 10 milligram and in the 1 milligram, it was 10%. It was, um, it was, uh, uh, I, I just go, go back to this one more because I also need to tell you that it was only the 25 milligram that did better than the 1 milligram. The 10 milligram, even numerically, did better. It did not statistically uh, do better than, than placebo. Of course, there's a blinding problem. You can always say this, but interestingly, uh, many patients on 10 milligram, in fact, had a psychedelic experience, and even 20 milligram, 25 milligram was better than 10. So you cannot at least say here that blinding uh, was the only reason why we found uh, uh, and, uh, a, um, a difference. But of course, you can discuss that. Another thing you can discuss is what is, in fact, the role of the psychological uh, uh, support, as, as, the, as the company calls this, in terms of, of the overall effect. We cannot separate these things. But one thing is sure that for, for when all the other studies are, are reviewed, to, as I did today, they talk about uh, psychotherapy, and it is ongoing psychotherapy. So there you can more talk about psilocybin-assisted psychotherapy. But here, it's more like we have psychologically supported psilocybin treatment. So uh, at least it is not the other way around with psilocybin-assisted psychotherapy. But of course that is something that can be discussed and I'm willing to discuss it in the, in the break. So my last slide here is the perspectives. Uh, if, uh, if phase three studies will be positive, we don't know that until maybe two, three years, um, uh, we may have approval from, from the authorities, so we may be able to, to to have this uh, treatment available maybe in, I don't know, four, four years, five years, I don't know, uh, in best case. And uh, then the questions are, how will the access from patients be to this treatment and how will the access be for doctors to deliver it? How many requirements will there come in terms of the regulatory authorities, et cetera, et cetera. So many open questions, but still, overall, I think it is, uh, it is positive. So thanks for your attention. Thanks.